Hey guys, tonight is October 7th and I am doing a quick little pop-up podcast, you know how I do with my five points. I put out a question on Twitter tonight because I was in the mood to do one and then someone shot me a question to my Ask FM that said, we know what your 20s have taught you, but what have your 30s taught you thus far? And I thought, you know what, what a fun topic. Um, so tonight's podcast, now that I'm 30 plus, what I know for sure and for those of you that don't know how old I am, I am 35 years old. I turned 35 in May. I was very excited um, to turn 35. And 33 was my favorite, favorite year. So for those of you who are approaching your 30s and are, and are 30 today and a little stressed out, let me tell you something, it only gets better. So five points, I'm gonna try to make it quick tonight. And I just really did these off the top of my head, and so I'm pretty sure I could have done like 40 points. But my first five thoughts of now that I'm 35, what do I know for sure? Number one, uh, I wrote, I am and will always be my greatest priority. Um, I don't know if I knew that in my 20s or as a teen, uh, but something that I have now learned is that it is okay to put myself first. Um, I used to put everyone else before me. I used to put um, others' needs, other people's thoughts, other people's opinions, other people's everything, um, excuse me, before my own self-care. And so now um, I'm better about that. And what's so cool is I was texting one of my girlfriends. So one of my really close girlfriends just got a job at Facebook. And I just shot her a note today. And I was like, you know what? I'm just so proud of you for, you know, the way you live and how you're doing your thing. And she just was like, you know, I got to be reminded to do me like so often, like she, so it's so easy to forget that like doing you got you here. So it's easy to get into environments and forget to do you. And so I'm like doing you is so dope and continue to do you. And even when doing you feels uncomfortable and even when doing you makes other people uncomfortable and even when doing you scares you sometimes, like that's you, that's who you are. And that's what, that's what we need. And, you know, I also used to put work before my own personal needs. I would put things, stuff, um, before my own personal needs. And I just wrote, yuck. Um, it's not selfish to put you first. And when you can't do something, you can't do it. And so, um, I don't know. I'm pretty sure I've shared how hectic my schedule can get. So if I could share like a screenshot of my schedule for last week was so crazy. Like my assistant packed the hell out of my schedule last week. Like every day I would look up every morning I would wake up and it would just be like packed from the time I get to work to the time I leave, I have stuff going on. And so even just the other day last week, I was like, hey, can you schedule a call with whoever? And she's like, I mean, I can. I just want you to know that your schedule's packed. But if I put this on here, you're going to be complaining about packing it. And I'm like, just put it on there. And so I've had to remind myself. And when something comes up, like let's just say I'm plowing through my schedule and I've gotten through one or two or three days, and I get to a day that I really just can't make an appointment, I just cancel it. You know, I'm just kind of like, I'm burned out. Like, I can't do it. Yesterday, I had a doctor's appointment. 10, at 10 15 and I went out of town for the weekend and Monday was my first day back and so since I went out of town I didn't check my emails I mean like I I looked at the important ones but I didn't open at all of them and I never opened all of them but I couldn't get to opening most of my emails and so I get in the office 8 30 I can't get up at 10 15 to go to a doctor's appointment because I'm just too inundated and I need to get this stuff out of the way so I was just like I can't do it so she moved it I asked if she could call and move it. And so I ended up doing my doctor's appointment at 3.15 and I didn't feel bad about it. You know, I was just like, I can't do it because I'm a little bit behind and um, I'm not going to feel bad about moving some things around. And so it's not selfish to be your greatest priority. That goes for your happiness. You know what I mean? Like if somebody is in your space or in your life and you just like, this does not make me happy, you know? And sometimes people want, you you feel compelled to give people these these big explanations for why you can no longer be friends with them or why you can no longer continue at the job or whatever. And the thing is, is that this no longer makes me happy is sufficient. You know, it's like I've had to end some friendships. 
I've had in some, you know, working relationships because I'm just like, my happiness is, is, is my priority and, and honoring my priorities, honey, this ain't it. So I'm sorry, but I got to move on. So I now know for sure that, you know, my self care is got to be on the top of my list has got to be on the top of that. Number two, I am going to learn the most by living. Now, many of you know that I am book obsessed, okay? And I know that I'm book obsessed, and that's why I put in parentheses, even though I love a good book. And I, like many of you, probably have, have found myself in moments where I was afraid to live, afraid to fail, afraid to hurt. And um, I uh, excel professionally, but personally, I have some struggles. You know, if something hurts me or... A, a friend disrespects me or I feel like I'm not happy with something, then I'm the kind of person that will retreat for a long time. Okay. Like I will retreat for a long time. And I used to cut people off, but I've stopped doing that because through therapy, I've learned to communicate. I'm still not at a hundred percent, but I've definitely learned to communicate. So I've had to learn that like, I'm going to get the most by living and not being afraid to come up against something, a feeling that makes me uncomfortable. And so I had therapy today. So my therapist, like one thing that I've noticed about myself is that, um, I will, what, what did I say to her? I was like, I will feel, I will re I will, I will get a feeling, a strong feeling. And sometimes you'll get this strong negative feeling and my new thing now that I'm 30 something is managing my reaction to the feeling. So I am not always successful. You know how something comes and it hits you and then all of a sudden you just like, boom, pop off. Sometimes that happens. I used to pop off all the time, but now I'm like, boom. It's like, I get the, I get the feeling and it hits me in the gut. And before I go off, pop off, say something, cut off. I'm like, I try to spend some time with the feeling, you know, like, am I feeling this way because I'm anxious? Am I feeling this way because I'm tired? Am I feeling this way because I'm unsure or I am confused? And so try to be open and honest with people and let them know about my feeling and then just managing my reaction. And I've learned that by living versus reading. And another thing is that it doesn't matter what happened when I put blank, tried it, and then that's mama, daddy, friend, cousin. I have to do it for myself. And so, you know, you always want to ask for advice and you always, you got, you know, your mom telling you, well, when I tried out for the dance troupe, you know, I didn't make it because we both, we got these thighs, you know, and with our thighs, we can't do this and that. BS, you know, you've got somebody, I remember my dad called me six o'clock in the morning when I changed my major and he was just like, you know, I just want you to know that I know you want to work in the entertainment industry, but the only way you're going to succeed is by sleeping with people. And I'm like, Oh, you know, I was like, well, I know that's what you heard dad, but I'm just going to get out here and I'm just going to try it. And you know, I'm not going to try, there's going to be no casting couch here, any of that. I'm just going to do my thing. And I made it. And so just reminding myself that I don't care how you got married I don't care how you got, you know, whatever, even though, you know, it's, it's helpful when people give us tips and tricks and that's why I do these podcasts, but it doesn't matter, um, what happened when whoever tried it, even if they failed, you got to do it for yourself because you might have something that person doesn't have. And that's just what it is. So do it for you. Number three, I'm even tougher than I thought I was. You know, I, I have heartbreak, check, heartbreaks. Let's just put a gang of S's on the end of that. Heartbreaks, check, you know, zero dollars, zero funds. What's so funny is that um, my bank called me a couple of weeks ago to invite me to be like a premier customer or some shit. I don't know. Like, you can, you know, they give you like a bat line to the bank. Like, hey... My league, you're such a great customer with us. We want to give you a bat line to the bank. And I went to my meeting with them and I just started cracking up. And I was like, you know, just three or four years ago, I was coming up to this bank going off on you for these overdraft fees. And so I'm tougher than that. Like, 
I survived the zero balance. I survived the negative balance. I survived being drug through the mud check. You know, I, in the beginning, there was some time where people would write some really not so nice things about me on the internet and, um, or even just tweet me some mean stuff. Like I remember I used to wake up in the mornings and people would just tweet me really mean things. And I couldn't understand why. I was like, here I am trying to do something helpful and trying to be an example. And I'm just getting literally, you know, drugged through the mud. Or sometimes people will create these fake uh, Instagram accounts and they'll be like, oh, look at this, look at that, you know, about her. And um, I now know that I'm tougher than all of that and that, you know, my feelings were hurt through the heartbreak, hurt through the zero balance bank account, and hurt when people drug me through the mud. Like, I have a friend who's just... Eh, I don't care who you are. I do not care who you are. When people talk badly about you, it's very, very hurtful. You know, it's not nice. Um, and it's painful at times. But I have learned to rise above that now that I'm 30 something. And I'll tell you something that I learned that I learned about. I think I learned this, I would say, halfway through 33. And I was like, when someone's saying something really bad about me and they've never met me, we don't have any experiences, I'm like, that's really something that they're saying about themselves because how can you feel so strongly in such a negative fashion about somebody you don't know? So I'm just like, I look at that person and I feel bad and I'm just like, you know what, I'm just really glad that I'm in a place in my life where I am not jumping to conclusions and and writing negative things about people or spending energy on people that do not care about me. You know, that more than anything is that I'm just very grateful that I am investing all of my energy into myself and into helping others. Um, number four, I am worthy. I am worthy financially. I am worthy of being loved and I am worthy of being respected. Um, these are all things that I don't think I was too confident about in my twenties. Um, but now I know that I am worthy financially. In my last podcast, I talked about, you know, um, how your word, if you, how your word, you can create income with your word and how you live and being impeccable. And so I now know that I'm worthy of the finances that I have, you know, I'm worthy of that. I've worked very hard. I've worked very hard and it's not magic. It's not anything to be shocked about. I put in the work. I did the time. I, I, I did what I was supposed to do. So I'm worthy of that. Um, I'm also worthy of being loved. You know, it's like, I, I think I've had moments when there have been people who have loved me and I'm just like, oh my God, why do you love me so much? You know, and it was because I didn't love myself enough. So I couldn't understand when someone else would love me. Why do you love me? What is this all about? Um, or basically accepting the love that I've thought I deserved and that was some really crappy stuff you know accepting some really crappy treatment because that's what I believed I deserved and I now know that I don't deserve that I deserve to be um loved greatly and I also know and me and Kim who works with me talked about this that there's nothing wrong this is a bonus that there's nothing wrong with wanting to be loved and wanting to love someone else I think we get so caught up in like the hustle and the grind and I don't need anybody and this and that, that it's like feeling like you want to love someone else seems thirsty. And we're like, that's not thirsty. That's very noble, It's very noble to want to love someone and don't ever let anyone take that from you. Um, if you want to love someone and you want to be loved in return and you desire that, don't feel like you can't desire that. It does not make you thirsty. That is a total totally normal thing to desire and you can have it you want to be healthy about it you know what I mean you don't want to be a doormat um and you don't want to play yourself unnecessarily but you are definitely worthy of that and you are worthy of respect in the same fashion number five and it's my final point is that the universe and or your God whatever you believe makes good on all promises okay so I'm gonna say that again understand that the universe and or your God, whatever you believe or whoever you believe makes good on all promises, but you must be faithful. Okay. And I say, when people tell me, Oh, I believe in this and I believe in that. And you got Bible verses in Quran and you you're quoting this and that. And I'm like, how faithful are you really? And it's like, what is faith? Faith is honoring the call. 
What is the call? It's that thing that's in your gut. It's in your heart. It's the thing that won't let you sleep. And you've got to be faithful even when you don't get it. And it's like, what is this? What's this constant knock on my door? I don't know how this is going to happen. I don't know how this is going to work. I can't see the end of this. That's faith, okay? Faith is when other people don't get it. You know, it's like, Lisa, what are you doing? There's no, there's nothing for you in that. What are you getting out of this? Why are you doing it for free? Because that's your gut and you are being faithful to the call. So understand that um, when you are faithful and you truly believe um, the promises, like they'll make good on our promises. And it's like for the first, like, Every New Year's Eve, I cry uncontrollably when I think about my life and I think about the things that I have accomplished and I think about the people that I have affected and I just go, oh my gosh, I always wished and hoped for these things and I was very faithful through the negative bank accounts. I was faithful through, you know, the no furniture, the sleeping on the floor, the house with no AC, um, no one understanding, no help from anyone, but I just kept honoring the call and here I am. And so I hope that this helps you tonight and um, keep talking to me because I love talking to you. Bye.